And finally, I wanted to uh, uh, make this last point, which is a, a very particular point uh, that is a caution to myself and others, that I see a lot of people who are looked to for intellectual guidance, even if they're not scholars, and even some of the people from the scholarly class saying that, look, we need to cast in our lot with the evangelical community. Why? Because they're a community of faith and we're a community of faith. And at least there's some guidance in Christianity and there's no guidance in, in liberal modernity or whatever. And I could not disagree more wholeheartedly. Allah Ta'ala in his own book, he says, La, لَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ لَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ that the Jews and Christians will never be happy with you. They'll never be pleased with you until what? Until you follow their millah. If you look in the Spanish Inquisition, you'll see that even when the Muslims converted and fo followed their millah, they still ended up slaughtering them, genociding them, killing them off, treating them like second-class citizens. It's not going to happen. They're using you as a pawn as long as they want to use you, and they're not going to be done with it. And in particular, the most egregious, if the evangelical community that's been clamoring for war against the Muslim world for basically my entire life. If that's not a proof for somebody that these people don't give a damn about you and will spill your blood at a moment's notice, passing all these anti-Sharia bills, opening Guantanamo Bay, all of these genocidal wars, that they'll spill your blood at a moment's notice if they had the opportunity to do so. Particularly worthy of note from the, from the, from the Christian right is the Catholic Church, which even surpasses, even surpasses the Protestant evangelical community. Why? Because they actually have an organization. They actually have a formal head. They actually have decrees that are written as canon and that are written as law. And there's continuity from one pope to another in the institution. There are literally papal records that have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of names of Muslim children that were stolen and forced baptized in places all around the world, from the Philippines all the way to uh, Buda, part of the Hungarian capital of Budapest, which was a garrison of, completely of Muslims. All of the, the adults were massacred and the children were forced baptized. They have the names. They know which Hungarians to this day are, the, the descendants of for, forced baptized Muslims. Look what happened in Sicily. Look what happened in uh, Portugal. Look what happened in Spain. The fatawa are still there in the record books. Nobody ever apologized for any of these things to this day. So forgive me, forgive me for not being excited about the Pope, even though he seems like a nice guy in his conduct outwardly. It's just, you know, forgive me for not thinking of him anything differently as Barack Obama becoming president after George W. Bush and still droning the smack out of Somalia, still droning the smack out of Iraq and out of uh, Afghanistan, that we still see news articles for those few people who care of villagers and children and women, you know, being uh, slaughtered as collateral damage. If you think somehow or another, hey, let's like uh, make an alliance with these people and somehow it's going to pay off in the future. I think this is really stupid politics. I think it's politics that's not congruent with the book of Allah and it's not congregant with the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, both in the past and about the end times. And I think it's not congruent with any sort of common sense. Am I saying that every Catholic is waiting to do an inquisition on you? No. I have Catholic neighbors. They're nice people. They probably never even think about any of these things. Every evangelical Christian is willing to massacre you. I have relatives, mashallah, that are evangelical Christians. They're not, you know, and they don't even think about these things. But politically, there are institutions in place. They have a track record. In the Catholic Church, there are actually ideologically institutions in place and one of the reasons there are still so many Catholics in the world is because they're deliberately not told what they actually believe because if they actually were told, they themselves would find these things disgusting. Why is it that Muslims think that somehow casting a lot with those people, the institutional forces and political forces behind these groups is somehow going to be beneficial for uh, Islam and for the Muslims and that we're all uh, aqwam of faith and that's all. Where it's a maxim amongst the usuleen and kufru millatun wahida. That kufr is, is, is one millah. The kufr is one millah. And I know Malik didn't agree with this, but methodologically, right, the whole idea of one millah, kufr being one millah, is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ saying, لا يتوارثو أهل الملتين 
that that two people who die on two different religions they will not inherit from one another and the the jamhur the preponderant majority of the fuqaha interpret this to mean what that if a muslim dies his non-muslim heirs whatever religion they may be don't have a right to claim an automatic stake in his inheritance and if a non-muslim dies his muslim relatives don't have an automatic stake to claim their inheritance however if a Jew dies, his Christian relatives can claim a stake in his inheritance. And if a Christian dies, his Jewish relatives can claim a stake in his inheritance. The idea is what? That there are Aslan, there are only two Millas. Islam and non-Islam. That's it. The rest of it, your politics, you, you know, if there's a short-term plan to, uh, you know, make partnerships with people, you know, today... Uh, uh, Chris Christie doesn't like Donald Trump tomorrow he likes him and endorses him and then the day after that he doesn't like him anymore that's how actual politics works not by casting lot with people and fighting their wars or saying let's all vote for Joe Biden and then we'll hold him accountable tomorrow in some sort of mystical sense but it never happens it never happens uh, that's that's just really naive politics is dumb politics we wasted our money and our time and our emotional bandwidth on it enough we need to get to having our own agenda and looking forward to it as well uh, and not get dragged into what is a culture war of um, just disparate and separate sets of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq. Allah ta'ala forgive us for what we said is wrong and uh, show us what's right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hope open the hearts of both of the speaker and the listener uh, to hear something better and to understand something better and to say something better and to learn uh, from our mistakes. Allah ta'ala protect us from the plotting and scheming of evil people, those people who choose to rob uh, um, being of their fitrah, Muslim or otherwise. Allah Ta'ala protect us from those people who would choose to use us as pawns in their uh, wars against each other and uh, uh, leave us on the day of judgment exhausted with nothing to show for it. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala protect the mothers uh, uh, of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the mothers of our qawm, whatever faith they may be uh, here uh, that live in, in our uh, country and in our state. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala protect the... the uh, uh, Jinnah, the fetuses that are in the wombs of the mothers, uh, uh, that he decreed for them their risk, and he decreed for them his lutf, and he made them uh, to be the precursor to human life, which he commanded should be honored. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have lutf on the mothers and on the children and on, on, on families, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all uh, to something better. May Allah ta'ala guide the Muslims to something better, and may Allah ta'ala write for those people who haven't tasted the sweetness of faith yet, that they should also have the light of Iman enter into their hearts and that they should also be people of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that they should also be people who he honors in this world and in the hereafter. There's enough room in this world for all of us, inshallah. We wish everybody to be successful and it breaks our heart whenever anybody fails. Uh, whether they be from our own friends or our enemies, we don't rejoice in the failure of anybody, neither materially nor spiritually, uh, uh, nor uh, uh, in any other way that's meaningful for a human being. Wassallallahu tabarak wa taala wassalam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.